Welcome back to the Scorecard Sets for another Q and A. It's been a while. Has it has been, it's been like a little bit. While. They've been going out on the podcast every week, so it feel, I think hopefully you feel if you're listening, yeah. you feel that it's been regular. What's cool about these is when we first started the Q and As, Jack and Joe, the questions <laughs> have been flooding in. Yes, was how he said. And now they actually literally and actually are. why we've not done a Q and A is because we're trying so hard to keep on top of YouTube comments and. Instagram questions and Facebook, but it's awesome, guys. Keep them coming in. Yes. Any training questions that you've got, anything related to calisthenics, anything we can help with, that's what we want to do. So, uh, so keep sharing those thoughts and asking questions. Yeah, so wherever you're hearing this, whether you're watching it on YouTube or it's on yeah. social, whatever, just comment there or you can email us directly. Um, and today's Q&A theme is, so we're trying to theme them now a little bit, so it's around learning new skills. But before we get stuck into it, I've got an icebreaker for us. Uh, it's yeah, you know, Tim doesn't know what it is, it's just like it's going. Um, just because I've started using a new emoji um, and I wanted to know what your favourite, oh, what's your okay. favourite emoji at the moment? Aubergine. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, or should I tell you what mine yeah, is? Yeah, go on. So mine's that, and if people have been, I'm often now put it as a three. It used to be like the... So um, it was a disco man. The disco man, he still gets it. But so it used to be disco man, the... I'm all right, okay, sign with your hand, and then a thumbs up. Yeah. Now it's um, like the, the the emoji theme of the cowboy hat. On. Right. I, yeah, I had noticed it. You, Him, yeah. then with, the, and then the. So he's now my favourite with the disco purple disco guy, and then either a thumbs up or. Yeah. A, yeah. So it's I mean, the, it's interesting that you have favourite emojis. I'm, I'm literally like my brain go, Like I don't think I have a clear thread as to. I quite like the um, the fist pump, yeah. and the muscles, obviously. Okay. Um, and the other one I used for the first, I'll tell you what, yeah, you can say, favorite, say now we're getting the other day, we, we, today we filmed a video of my um, testing a shoulder press, yeah. barbell shoulder press, in relation to what I can do from a bodyweight handstand push-up. Um, and somebody put down that they thought that, that, that um, I would be able to do 95 kilos. So I replied with that emoji where the brain, the guy's brain is literally exploding. And it was uh, the first time I felt that was appropriate to use yeah. it. You're, yeah, your, your emoji use is... Quite varied, actually. Yes. I, Whereas I probably out. stick to yeah. So anyway. This is, that's I mean, probably... what, what a highbrow start. To <laughs> it's an icebreaker, this... just loosen things off loosen um, until we get into the, uh, into the real stuff. So um, the first question, or, or the, 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 we've got a couple of questions coming asking about learning new skills. So um, I thought it'd be nice just to frame it first and just give people a bit of understanding around what was the first, like, things or skills that that you actually learned or we or I like that we actually learned. So what was mm. the first thing what was the first thing that started it all started it all off you and then what was the first thing you actually nailed? Yeah. And I think it's interesting. The reason I'm looking pensive, I think is the right word, um, is because I'm just what kind does of that mean? thoughtful, okay. deep, complex. Educational you know I mean? this, isn't it? Yeah. More yeah. highbrow than which is your favourite emoji. <laughs> <laughs> I think I, I never started that with the intention of learning a skill. I think yeah. um, that came as a realization of what I was doing in the process. Um, I knew that I wanted to move in a new way, but I don't know that I, I specifically attribute that to a skill acquisition yeah. phase uh, process. And more about I want to be strong enough to be able to do a handstand. Yeah, yeah. Um, and then realized when I embarked on that journey that actually there was a big skill component that I needed to learn. I needed to teach myself to move in a different way. Um, so it was handstand for me because of my shoulder history. It was about if I can handstand, that's going to give me some confidence that I've got a stable shoulder. And at the same time, I started playing around with the back lever because I just didn't know where else to start. Like we literally, my calisthenics journey started with a lot of probably how other people's has done, is I Googled something and that looks cool. I'm going to try and work yeah. it out. Um, and I, I could skin the cat already. And then I realized actually I couldn't connect the strength together and just kind of fumbled around within that until something clicked. Um, but I think I've, as, I've, as I've gone through now, being able to do some of that stuff with the handstands and back levers and other things, I get hungry for the skill acquisition process. Mm. I, I talked about it in a blog that we're going, that's going out um, about called uh, Play is the Highest Form of Research. Um, and I like the idea of learning new things, teaching yeah. myself to move in new ways. Um, and the challenge of trying to do something, failing, but then as you go through time, refining that motor pattern so that you can actually then do it. And you're yeah. like, oh, okay, I've accomplished something new. As yeah. a 37 year old, I'm not sure how many chances and opportunities we get to do that unless we're intentional about yeah. it. Yeah, it's cool when it clicks, even if, even if it's not like I can actually now do the full thing, but just when you first get that first glimmer of like, okay, like yeah. from a movement patterning, how we were talking at point of view, we go, oh, actually, I, I know what, I can't do it, 
but I now know what I am mm. trying to do and I can feel it. I can just feel that now I'm actually just not strong yeah, yeah. in that new position. It's a, I think it's a very different feeling to say, like you do you like a part run. So the feeling that you get when you do a part run and you've been running since you were three years old, yeah, yeah. like you've just run faster. So you've, yeah. you've done something, yeah, yeah, yeah. but you've, it's, it's more of the same. You've just become yeah. better conditions to be able to achieve that task. Whereas it's almost like going back to basics of like, I just, my body doesn't know how to move in this way. So I'm just going to go and try and do something. And like I say, when it clicks, that's cool. Yeah, like yeah. It's, it's exciting that, that, that you've all of a sudden you've unlocked this new thing that you can do and you've taught yourself something yeah. completely different. That's brilliant. I remember watching that first Frank Madrano, I can't remember what yeah. the title of the first Frank Madrano yeah, video yeah, right. and being like, like talking about new ways to move or ways to train, but yeah, being very much like, how strong for your body weight that it looked and what it could actually do with his body. Okay, it looked great as well, mm. but it was it was all about like what could he do with his body that really like just got me into thinking, okay, let's have a bit yeah. of a let's have a bit of a play at that and just love like that idea of yeah, being able to be able to like striving to be able to do things. I've talked before about like struggling, never having an issue with motivation whilst I was playing rugby. But when I wasn't, when I had to retire, then training became quite difficult, mm. which I never thought would happen at all, never. Um, but then the hunger to try and almost, I feel like chasing something, maybe sometimes that's too, you take it too far, but trying to learn um, and, and, and be able to teach your body to then do this new thing, whether it's skill or strength or generally mm. it's a combination of both. But even if it's like the strength side of that for me, rather than trying to just lift weights to do something yeah. makes such a big difference. Yeah, I think you, you, speaking to people that like sports or they like games or mm. some activity that has, a, that has a result and a an end point of a, a yeah. win, loss or draw, whatever it might be, you have a, those sorts of pe people and you would have been the same as it turns out in that situation that you're training for an outcome. Yeah. There's something which you have a tangible um, result at the end of what you've ever done, whether it's a part run, whether it's a game of rugby, whether it's a squash game. Like my father-in-law is like that. He's like... Um, he enjoys a game, he doesn't like going to the gym, he can't get motivated around it. And I think unless the gym or training then becomes something that has a similar hook where there's actually, yeah. I'm with working towards X. So yeah. it might be that people get into the gym and then they find powerlifting and the, the appetite comes because they want to put more weight on a bar and see what they can lift. Cool, that's good because, but it comes, a, that's a capacity type thing. Yes, there's skill in lifting, but yeah. once you can deadlift, you can deadlift. You just then got the different strength adaptations to try and do that better. Whereas what I think is different with the calisthenics and what, I don't know, speaking on your behalf, but like ticks boxes for you and me, is that there's always something new. There's yeah. a tangible thing to, to challenge and it's, it's, it's you against your yeah. fu current <laughs> functional state. Yeah, like, yeah. Not that that's static, but you're competing against yourself to be able to try and push yourself to do something else. Yeah. Which is, I think it's just a different way, but it, it, it creates some, um, I wouldn't say addiction, but it, 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 it's attractive. Like to want to want to be able to see what else can I do. If I can do this one thing, well, what what else can I do? And yeah. being inspired by other people doing stuff and going, actually, they make it look so easy. Can I actually get to that point where that looks easy for me as well? Yeah. Something cool. something I've never liked doing is giving up. So like yeah. once I've trying, it's like well, I'm going to try and do X, and you start going down that journey. Like I don't want to, even no matter how hard some of the stuff is that you're trying to do, don't actually want yeah. to give up on it. Anyway. And I think for me, like my interest is as is a sports scientist in strength and condition was when I discovered the gym, and I was training a lot. So my first started training, I don't know if we've talked about this much before, actually. We first started training when I was in Australia. And a friend of mine called Nick came over to visit from America and he grew up in American sports and like he knew the gym and he like, got a like, great opportunity. He's like, let's go to the gym. And we literally did like bro split training for about a year, like, and just, yeah, with my first exposure, I think I was seven, 62 kilos when I first started. 60 you know, kilos? Wet through. Light. That is light. Yeah. I remember weighing myself on the first 62. day. 62? I'm small, I've got a small frame. Um, I was like 62 or 64, but it was definitely in the sixes. It was wow. a six involved. <laughs> it was a six involved. Um, so, we just, we just we went through this process just like, okay, we're just going to do hypertrophy training. We've got to know what we were doing. Like, yeah. it was just chest three times a week and then whatever else you could fit in. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but when I came back to the UK and I started getting more involved in strength and conditioning, my appetite for training was all focused around actually using this as research now. Like, I enjoy training because I'm learning all the time. Yeah. It was never, it's never really been for me to go to the gym because it's lifting weights. I yeah. think there's always something else involved. But 
off topic on skill, but still just understanding what the motivations are and what gets you excited about trading and then why do you push forward to go and do whatever it is that yeah. you find enjoyable. Yeah, and understanding that about yourself is yeah. useful. And I, just as I was saying it out loud then, that I've never really thought before, like why I'd actually didn't realise that that's what my motivator was. I just thought I loved training. Mm. Um, so yeah, Imagine me playing rugby at 62 kilos. <laughs> What was 62? Was it 64? I don't know. I, when I Flight first, my away. first like professional game of rugby, I was 72 kilos yeah. and I did a backwards roll and I tried to tackle somebody and it just bowled me over. <laughs> fun times, fun times. Anyway. So on to the more structured questions, Jacko. Yes. What have we got from the community? From the, from the community, from you guys out there. Um, and thank you for all these, all these questions. And we're just trying to sift through the ones that are going to give the most value for, for everybody. Um, so this is from Instagram and his name is Andy Romano, which Andy, simple, Romano. Exotic. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Something like that. Um, he's been, he got the free beginner's guide a couple of months ago. Good man. Well done. Um, it's free on the website if you need that. Um, and he's been using it well. Um, he's done well in his frog stands, um, as you can see in his profile yeah, picture. I, I like <laughs> that. I like that. Like, check me out. Um, so well done for that. And so obviously he's got the bug for it. Um, but he, um, on this theme of, of learning new skills, he wants to learn new things like the back lever you talked about was your first thing that we sort of nailed. Um, as well as things like handstands, um, as he's been going to the gym and he's worried, or he's not, he's not, tr uh, he's got some trouble around understanding. Does he need to do weights to supplement the strength gains that he he, under he seems to understand that he knows he needs skill and strength, um, but does he need? To, he's asking, does he need to supplement his calisthenics with weight training? Um, he says he's been doing a bit of research, but there's nothing clear out there for him, or he's a bit confused about that. And I think that. I'm sure you can clear that up for him. I feel like I could open a can of worms yeah, on this subject. Keep it, yeah, we can. Um, in short, no. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, I'm going to try and layer this up a little bit. Weight training potentially has a benefit for calisthenics in that you are increasing the, the muscle's ability to be able to produce force. So you could do lap pull down because that might, you could rationalise, give yeah. you a benefit for your muscle up. Yeah. Or pull ups or whatever it might be. The difference being that we, in sports, we'll talk about something, we use a frame, uh, the phrase transfer of training effect. What that means is in the gym, how easy is it for me to transfer the physical attributes that I've developed as a result of a strength and conditioning program into sports performance, which could be rugby, swimming, or athletics. If the gym and SNC work isn't giving us a transfer of training effect, the athlete's not improving, therefore the gym program is not providing the level of support that it needs, unless it's creating things like robustness and decreasing risk of injury, which is of value. So, because a pull-up is quite different to a lap pull-down because you, you, there's a lot more stabilisation required um, through the integration of the kinetic chain or our movement system. You've got to start to think about multiple joint stability. I'm no longer just sat with my hips supported on a bench and I'm just using my lats entirely. When I'm hanging from a bar, I've got to try and link those two things together. Do we get as good a transfer over from, pull -up, from, from lap pull-down into pull-ups? question I don't know like you're gonna have to it's one of those things you're gonna go through yeah. my recommendation would be the closer to the specific task that you can get the more likely the to you can increase this transfer of training effects so from an athletic perspective if we're gonna try and create with, with this work that we do with swimming we're trying to do work with the swimmers which replicates what it's like to be in the water which is going to maximize our transfer of training effect if we were just going to go lap pull down and then we get the guys to go into water where they're having to create multiple joint stability like I talked about before there's much more likelihood of that being a success if they're doing pull-ups in the in the gym and swimming in the water yeah. because it's the similar type of movement. So that's a long way around of saying that the specificity of movement is that if you can start to train more like what you want to do, um, you're going to get better outcome. But because calisthenics means strength and beauty, like strength is a part of calisthenics, and if you understand how to progress appropriately, you're building strength all the time. It can be fairly specific strength. But we also throw into the mix what we always talk about, it depends on what you want, yeah. don't we think? Yeah, yeah. No, I th well, I think that you, you touch on all those points, like I agree with, and that touching on that point of um, lat pull-down for pull-ups. I remember being in the gym before talking to someone about pull-ups, like when I was playing rugby, and we were like, if you want to get good at pull-ups, we were just like, you got to do, like, we knew, you just knew. We didn't know why, but it was like, you got to do more pull-ups. It was mm -hmm. like, we'd done lat pull-down, but it just, even though it was a, pretty much the same movement, there was just something missing. And that happens in calisthenics where 
if you've got a weakness in the chain, you can identify that weakness and making that weakness better, like in isolation, then putting it back into mm. the full thing is like a good rational thought. Um, but what we, tend to, what we tend to see with our own training is that if you're like, say your front, your front anterior delt feels weak when you go in pressing out for your frog stand, for example. So do you go and isolate that with a weighted exercise yeah. or are you better sort of semi sort of isolating it in a, in a body weight exercise, mm. but still you're having to work that multiple joint stability and activation together. That's, I think the, you can kill two birds with one stone by doing the body weight yeah. thing. And I think what we're talking about is it comes back to your point at the start is the skill acquisition phase. Yeah. Like, yeah, you can get anterior delta stronger by doing a, um, a front delt raise yeah. using a dumbbell. But you're still then going to have to reintegrate that strength yeah, piece into it back in. movement pattern, which is skill acquisition. Yeah. Our motor learning is the ability of the, of the brain to start to create muscle synchronization, activation, and a coordinated pattern, which is going to fire the right muscles at the right time. Like each of those muscles, probably like a back lever is a great example. We talked about it today. You, most people, or a lot of people, who've got some form of decent training background, are probably strong enough to do a back lever. They're just not used to actually connecting the dots together. You have yeah. to create that connection. And then that's why we use progressions to be able to do that. You could go, actually, well, I've got to isometrically contract the lat. I'm just going to go and do some isometric lat contraction, however you want to make that look like. Yeah. Um, but it's still not connecting through the thoracolum fascia, into the glute, into the posterior chain, through the hamstrings, and, and, and creating that, that rigid um, pillar through the body, which is going to hold that back lever position. Yeah. Um, so I think, yes, strength is important. Do you need to use weights to do it? I think it's possible. Is it the most? Is it the shortest way home? Probably not. I yeah. will probably stick to calisthenics. I haven't really ever found in, in the last four and a half years of a point where I've turned to weight training in its traditional kind of sense of, I mean, like dumbbells and barbells to facilitate or improve a calisthenics movement. I've kept yeah, it within yeah. the calisthenics realm, yeah. and partly that because I enjoy that process of yeah. calisthenics and skill acquisition, and an understanding that I need to get all of that working together, yeah. which I don't think I get from. From weight training and just on that my last point before i let you wrap that one up is just around doing the, the least amount of work to get the most amount of change yeah. like we've talked a lot about busy lives and there's a lot of competition for time um if i'm doing if i want to do a planche then i might as well do a progression or regression of a planche rather than spending time doing anterior delt because while i'm doing that progression regression i'm integrating that into yeah, the whole chain totally. so that I mean, it's going to take me quicker to where i want to be yeah so yeah in Anything rapid, to add? Uh, well, just, yeah, to wrap it, like, you can do weights if you want to, yeah. but um, that's, that hits the nail on the head for me. Like, rather than isolating something and then trying to integrate it back in, like, can you actually get that strength that you're trying mm. to work, that you've identified as the weakness, but do it in a way that is working towards yeah. the thing you're trying to work on? There was a second part of Anna's question, which I'm, I'm literally just going to touch on quickly, was about he was found that he was probably not getting a muscle mass development that he was getting through, callus, through, through weight training, and is that important? Again, if you want to be a bodybuilder, there's, there's more effective ways than calisthenics to get to build muscle. Um, so different, you can use body weight training, and we did a Q&A on this a while back mm. about actually manipulating the training environment. But if you want to, if, you, if you're worried about that, like that's one thing I started off with. When I, when I got into calisthenics, I said I'm going to give myself three months. And I know enough about training that if I lose a load of weight and I don't like what my body looks like, I know how to get it back. Yeah. And I did three months and then never went back because yeah. I actually was quite happy with the way that I turned out looking. And I'm not yeah. as big as I was then, bulky wise, but I flipping can do some yeah. cool stuff now. So when we had Ross on, he touched on this point of if you've neurologically or from a, um, a maximal strength perspective, eked out as much as you can force, you can produce from a neural activation perspective. To get more force to be able to do more stuff, you need to go and make that muscle bigger. Bigger muscles produce more force. Um, and then that's again where we start to go, well, do I do that from a bodybuilding perspective and using bars and, and dumbbells, or do I need to do that from a calisthenics perspective? Because ultimately I want that bigger muscle to be part of a bigger movement pattern. And you still get an opportunity to manipulate your calisthenics training to create some muscle hypertrophy, yeah. but still within a pattern which is gonna serve you later on. So for example, muscle ups and pull ups, I'm doing some, some work, eccentrics like dropping down, I'm still getting my, my neural system is still connecting the midsection, it's still thinking about keeping the shoulder in a good position. So when I come back to training speed because I wanna tie my muscle up, I'm just reapplying that bigger muscle in the system which it already knows how to yeah. operate in rather than going, I've now got to train speed and I've got this, this neural learning side of things to look at as well. So. Yeah. Lots yeah. of stuff in there to think about. Yeah. So, as I say, it's a fairly big can of worms, but a yeah, great yeah. question. I no, enjoyed it's good. that one. We could carry on talking about that forever. Uh, right, I have got the, the second question for today, and I know what Jacko's first uh, question will be to this. It's What's from this? somebody oh. called Animate Yourself. Right. 
Is that his real name? <laughs> we know each other well. I think I'm going to say Where yes. from? Did um, you say YouTube? YouTube, I think this one. YouTube. Um, so he says, um, what is your favourite skills and is it in order or do you like all the skills equally? I love that bike. I've got... I don't want to pick a favourite. <laughs> <laughs> I've, got a, I've got a question for him. Can he animate us? Like, could he do us a oh. picture? If that, if that, I don't know, that maybe that's not his thing, Comment but on. if that's what his name is. Yeah, I think you would quite like animate. a caricature of us. Yeah, it'd be cool, yeah, that would be wicked. If someone wants to draw some pictures, they're like animated caricatures not of us. <laughs> Just <laughs> nice. Yeah. I've got a rude question, actually, that we can maybe finish with. Okay. Um, so, say, say, sorry, I just got, I was... My favourite skills. Favourite skills. Order of preference. Cal Calisthenics-wise. Or is it like, yeah, or is it like... I can wiggle my ears without touching them. Um, no. Is that your favourite skill? <laughs> Cracky, we need to change. Favourite skill. Um, I don't know, it's probably... It's probably... Handstanding. Like, and it like something handstand related. Do you know why I think that is? Because I would probably say the same. Handstand has got so much capacity and depth for change. Yeah. Whereas when you can do a back lever, you can do a back lever. Yeah. Like, like you, you want to do a single arm back lever, then you've just got to get rid of because he's strong in yeah. there. And you can high, you can start your legs up, you can lower down, and you yeah. can, if, you, if, you, if, you, if you're that sort of person you can change your hand position. Use your, your feet to walk up and down, that's not really me. But if that's you, you, you can do that sort of stuff. But it's in and around the same thing, and, and those, all of those things come as a result of just like you say, you just got to get stronger. Yeah, There's yeah. no real skill activation or yeah. skill acquisition. Yeah, once you've, once you've developed the movement pattern, you've got that connection. Yeah. It is then, whereas with, with handstand, you're constantly challenging the like, yeah. the balance, the proprioception. Um, what I find amazing about that with handstands is hands on the floor, completely different to hands on parallel, parallel and then completely different to straight on. Straight bar, they yeah. don't feel like there's a great yeah. deal of crossover at all. Like the straight bar handstand, even though I can go comfortably off the floor, is, is hard because yeah. you, you just, you're having to now activate and find your balance in a completely different pattern. Even just turn your hands out a little bit yeah. and you just lose that like front portion as well. So, yeah. yeah. Um, but I, I would definitely say the same. I think handstands for me because it, it's got, I have a lot of fun with the handstands. Yeah. Like you can tiger bend and you can, Forearm stand and, and maybe it's inversion rather than handstands that, it's, that I'm interested in. But mm. you've done loads of work on like elbow levers and stuff, stuff which yeah. again is, is yeah, linking it's... these transitional things together. And can you you can go forced like you can hold that static position like in a handstand, but then what happens and how do you create the activation and the, and the control to it to lower yeah. into elbow lever, not hit your feet on the floor, all yeah. that sort of stuff. I think it's there's a couple of things that I, I guess just thinking out loud about it. Why I like it is it's it's fun like. For mm. sure, there's like no real, um, you know, if you want to do, if you like we were talking about like hypertrophy, like if you want to do hyper, you've got to do six to 12 reps and you've yeah. got to have 90 seconds rest and yeah, you've got to yeah. do a lot of volume. But if you want to get better at hand balancing, it's like, well, you just sort of have to do some. And then they can, you obviously you can do th everything better, but there's not like you have to do five seconds like this and then mm. like, there isn't, there's that more like scope for just like literally having fun with it and just sort of, no one can tell you that it's, I don't think you can necessarily say it's wrong, if you know what I mean. Yeah, it just yeah. feels a lot more, a lot more open, a bit, fr bit freedom, and you can just do it, and because you can just do it anywhere. I think it's quite an individual thing, and it's, you have to be quite mindful with it. Like if you if you compare it to um, a deadlift, like a deadlift in many ways is a deadlift, and it's very similar for people, and everyone's trying to achieve the same thing, and it, it's a fairly once you've got the movement pattern or you can create the right shape, it's a fairly simple process. Mm -hmm. Whereas if you and I started to learn to handstand on the same day from, from point one, we would probably, as we did, have very different strengths. So I'm now on my journey with my handstand about like, what do I need to work on? Where do I need to spend time? Where well, yours would be quite different to that. Yeah. You don't get such radical changes when you're talking about more um, stand, I'm gonna call them standard, and it's not disrespectful, it's just what I would see more in a gym of like yeah. deadlift, squat, bench press. The, the, there's far less variability, far less um, freedom within the movement yes. for actually for it to be an individualized process. And that's what I like about the mindset of like, uh, we talk in handstands particularly about being present in your practice. That thing of actually, I'm just gonna process what's going on, what did I do wrong? The only thing in weight training that I've experienced which is like that is Olympic lifting where you, again, you're executing a highly complex complex mm. skill, and particularly like an example of a power clean or a, or a snatch, that's happening at speed. Yeah. Whereas the handstand is almost the opposite side of it. Loads of variability, lots of mindfulness in, in how you've gone about achieving the movement, but 
at the opposite end of the speed spectrum. It's much more controlled and, and slow movement. Um, so I would think that. Is there anything that you don't put, like skill-wise? Well, I just like wanted to up? shout out um, to the human flag. And I was going to say, I was going to ask you about yeah, that. that. That was like, that was the thing I wanted to, that was mm. the thing that I, before I even uh, probably even heard of calisthenics as a thing, did not sort of come across it, I'd seen a human flag and thought that was flipping cool. I remember the first time I saw and it. And just being like, I didn't think it was real. Like, I, just I, like, was, I was looking like, mm. how have you done that? Is that I turned the camera and yeah, like, you're like, is he hanging? No, the, the buildings look straight. And you're like going, but what, yeah, how I did, I feel, feel like now if we've been everyone, you see everyone doing it. Yeah, no, yeah. <laughs> Because we have immersed ourselves in the calisthenic <laughs> space. But yeah, no. Is there any skills that you don't like practicing now? Anything that I don't like practicing? Um, no, uh, just things that are hard. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I think um, there's still some stuff around like trying to do stuff which is challenging both from a skill perspective and a strength perspective mm -hmm. and the realization at those times where. I'm not strong enough or skilled enough to be able to do yeah, what I'm just trying bit, to do. That can sometimes be demoralizing. <laughs> yeah, and I think that's it with calisthenics is like you, you get some wins and you put a few things in the in the in the locker and you go, oh, I can do some cool stuff now. Yeah. But there's always an opportunity to find yourself at the bottom of the mountain again, go flipping like I feel like a beginner. Yeah. And I and I and I think that's probably one thing which has kept me so engaged with it and I can see long term staying engaged with it in that there's always something which is going to make me feel like I'm challenged. Yeah. Um, which is, again, different to what, we, what I've experienced in, in years gone by of, from a weight training perspective, is it's the same thing, I'm just going to put more weight on a bar, I'm going to lift it more reps, or I'm going to change the speed at which yeah. I'm going to lift it. Like it's, it doesn't have the variety, and I don't think it challenged me in that sense, because I was never driven by, I just want to be the strongest guy in the gym, because I started out at 62 <laughs> yeah, kilos. It's never like, going to be the... How are you going to be the strongest guy in the gym? Never. You can do like under 65 kilo strongman competition or something. I, I used to work as a scuba diving instructor, and there were some photos of me in Australia before I started training, and I look at myself and go, crikey, look at that <laughs> nine-year-old. It's like 20 years old. <laughs> A pasty white nine year dig, no to, We need to dig those out for Transformation Thursday or whatever. Oh, yeah, here's a transformation. <laughs> it's called puberty. <laughs> <laughs> Which didn't start until I was about 19. That's why I've got a baby phase, because I actually didn't start puberty until I was late on. Younger than Dave. <laughs> Not true. Um, so yeah, I, th I think if, what is my favourite in all the terms of preference, I just like. I like the opportunity that lies in front of me of just learning different stuff. Yeah. And, I, and I don't think it's it, that, it's that which I like most rather than being that manifested in any particular thing. Yeah. I like that, the, the, my final thing of being, I like that you get strong doing it. I do yeah. like that. I like, I like yeah. feeling strong and I like learning. I like that, like that whole learning something new and being able yeah. to do something cool. But well, like feeling strong and feeling good is... My last point on your human flag, um, that I think is really interesting is we, when we went to, to, to see the rig from Bulldog, um, it was cold warehouse. We literally gotten out of the car, we had driven for an hour, and with this rig was there, I just looked at the handles and went, oh, I'll see if it's stable. I'll just do a human flag. And I was not warmed up, not mobilized, yeah. but that's a testament to the skill acquisition process. Uh, like you just, your body just knows how to move in that way. It can activate the right muscles from cold sit on the car to doing a 20 minute warm up and going and I, that's what I like like yeah. I like one of those things that just be like, I can just do a handstand too All right yeah because it was a time when I literally like had never put my hands and tried to balance before yeah. I think and if you're on cool. holiday and want to take a cool photo somewhere then you have to have that in the locker don't you? exactly because <laughs> you might I mean someone might request a flag or a handstand anyway yeah. on a rock <laughs> yeah. on the tree yeah. I remember stopping I was doing downhill mountain biking in uh, in Thailand Catherine loved it. Catherine, yeah, hold that. I reckon that I could do a flag on that tree. Helmet on, still like it was like the like arm pack, like elbow and all that on the tree. And an American woman going, I think she may have even sworn. It was uh, that impressive. Yep, guilty as charged. I said. <laughs> I don't know what the, I think that is a natural conclusion. I don't think there is yeah. a, a, anything else in there. Do you want the naughty question? Yeah, yeah. Give us a bit, bit of blue fit dads at the end. Yeah, if anyone's, if you've if you've managed to listen to all of that rambling. You're into something now, aren't you? It's been, we've moved fairly quickly, but anyway. Oh. Uh, Innes de la Hoya, a YouTube question, yeah. says, can you demonstrate in the nude <laughs> so we can see how the muscles work? And she adds... Any particular muscle who's interested in? She says, that'd be so helpful. Thanks. <laughs> so a genuine question, maybe? Yeah, well, it, it was genuine in that it was, I copied it from YouTube. 
Um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say no. Um, <laughs> but I have, I've seen someone before. Uh, I forgot what his name. Athlete, athlete X. Yes. Who's a physio doing SNC, so he's got a good YouTube channel. Mm. And he's flipping ripped as well. And he must be, he's older than I think both of us. Well, not like, so he'll do, he's done something before where like he's ripped enough that you can literally see. Yeah, yeah. And then he'll, it will like draw on sort of the outline of his deltoid or whatever and then do something. And it, to actually see it working, it wasn't actually that. Doesn't yeah. sound, the, the question sound, I think the question potentially sounds a lot worse than maybe yeah. it is. But I know I, that we're, we're probably not going to do that. I feel we <laughs> could do something similar to that if we got a fake tan. Yeah, probably too long. And too, um, too pasty for I'd such like to do it with, clarity of with definition. glutes. Anyway. <laughs> I've, that has brought us to a rather yes, odd conclusion. Let's move on but, quickly um, from that. Yeah, thanks, Ines. We're going to say no for now, but we appreciate we'll put the, it on the uh, back burner. Yeah. If we get short on content, <laughs> and one day you turn it you go with no clothes on, you'll have known that we've run out of good ideas to, to talk about. If you have any other questions, um, please do ask them wherever you tend to find us most easily, and we'll get them on answered in uh, a future podcast. Uh, thank you for watching and listening. Until next week, and after Jay, we've had a, a bit of time today. I kept stealing his thunder, it, it, so I'm going to let him... He was cutting my, yeah, he's cutting my grass. Fine, tee up, tee up, go on, I'm knocking out. Until next week... Glass dismissed!